investigative reporter, Ken Vogel. Gentlemen, good to have you with me. And Ken, let me start with you. Trump responded to General McCaffrey, the other national security officials, during an interview on Fox Business this morning. I want to play that for everybody. Take a look. I wasn't using any of them, and they would have loved to have been involved with the campaign, but I wasn't using, I had no interest in using. Look where the country is now on national policy. Look where we are in defense. Look where we are. Look at, look at the mess we're in. All right, so talking about the mess that we're in, we've got Senator Collins, Congressman Riggle coming out. Uh, Collins being added to the list of Senators Graham, Sass, Flake, Cruz, Heller. Uh, what's the breaking point for Republicans? Uh, and, and really, is there one? Or are they just looking for a way to distance themselves? I think, Thomas, that they've already reached that breaking point, and that breaking point was that when they uh, did a real clear-eyed assessment of how Donald Trump's place at the top of the ticket could affect their ability to hold on to the Senate and even potentially the House. And once they realized that it would have a really negative effect and could be a significant drag, they started looking for ways to distance themselves. And where I think you're really seeing is it, it is with some of these super PACs that are aligned with the party but are, are, are shying away from Trump and instead trying to do triage to protect the down ballot races. That shows that the party has sort of, to some extent, already reached that breaking point where they're scared of what Trump is going to do to them on November 8th. All right, so Josh, if we think about down yeah. ballot and we look at some of the latest polling, Trump trailing in the polls, NBC News, Survey Monkey tracking poll. Uh, what is the effect if Republicans like Ryan, Mitch McConnell, and John McCain stay on the Trump train? Yeah, well, I, th I think this is part of why they're breaking away now is they're admitting to themselves that he's going to lose. It's not just that they're admitting he's not going to change, but that it's going to cause him to fall apart in the polls. This is the difficult thing, trying to make a case. Yes, you're not going to vote for Donald Trump, but vote for us down ballot to make sure that there's a Republican check on Hillary Clinton in the White House. Right. This is the case that Republicans made during the 1996 election when they sort of admitted that Bob Dole was going to lose, and they held on to both houses of Congress so that it was possible to thread that needle, but Bob Dole lost by eight and a half points. I think we may be looking at a double digit loss for Donald Trump, which would cause really serious problems. In Colorado, Trump. we already see that add up by right. a member of Congress that's running to say, you know, keep me or, or send me so that I can keep a check on Hillary Clinton. Yeah, and so he's in Not an almost. Trump. Right, and yeah. he's in an almost even split district. So he realizes he's going to be in a lot of trouble given that Clinton is probably going to lose Colorado by a wider margin than she loses the country by. I'm going to be interested to see if any of those candidates are able to make. Make that sale. I think it's generally hard to convince voters to split their tickets. There's been a decline in split ticket voting over the last few decades. So if this works, it's going to be unusual. But then Donald Trump is an unusual candidate. And there may be a lot of people who almost always vote Republican who abandon him who are open to that message that they should vote Republican in other races. All right. So as we look at the post convention numbers, guys, and most could dismiss this as part of the bump or not part of the bump. But when we look at just the mammoth poll, all right, that's the first one since the Trump uh, public spat with the Khan family fully played out. That isn't post-convention nearing mid-August. Uh, Ken, is this race pretty set and is the only thing that could really change it in Trump's favor accepting the presidential debate schedule? Certainly that's the next sort of set milestone on the calendar that has mm -hmm. the potential to reset the race. I don't think the race is set. Uh, however, it is telling. Josh uses the Bob Dole analogy from 1996. The, the, the point at which Republicans decided Dole was going to lose and we need to uh, protect the, uh, the, the congressional seats was much closer to the election, really weeks out. Here we are months, three months out, and Republicans are already making that decision. That's very telling. That suggests that even though I, I think, and, and and most uh, observers who have watched this historically think that there is the potential for the race to tighten significantly. In fact, probably the likelihood that it will. The fact that Republicans are already turning away from him and trying to do damage control is really telling. All right, so uh, let's talk about this other issue, guys, with Hillary Clinton being sued by the parents of two Americans killed in Libya. They claim Clinton's use of the email, private email server, contributed to those 2012 attacks. Uh, and also the fact that they were told by her that it was a YouTube video that contributed to the killings and that she has said that's not what I told them. They feel like they're being defamed by her version of the story. So Clinton's campaign put out a statement saying nine investigations have found no evidence of wrongdoing. But Josh, the Benghazi attacks, that's a hot button issue and it gets people to pay attention. How tough is this basically putting her in a role like Trump against Khan that she's in a role against the parents of those that were killed in Benghazi and their parents who have lost 
uh, a person that was killed in duty in the line of fire. Well, so far, Hillary Clinton has been able to handle criticisms from the families of, of the people killed in, in Benghazi mm. in, a, in a fairly skillful way. She has uh, treated them with respect and talked about them, uh, about the significance of their loss before going on to defend her position. It's sort of similar to what George W. Bush did when Cindy Sheehan, uh, who mm -hmm. was a, a, an anti-war activist whose son was killed in Iraq, would criticize him. The trap that Donald Trump fell into, getting into a personal argument with the Khan family, is an unusual one. Most politicians know better than to do that. So I think, you know, this, this, is, this is obviously a story that Clinton would prefer not to be dealing with, but I think uh, that so far the damage that it is going to do to her candidacy has already been priced mm -hmm. in. People who are very upset about this are already very upset about it. Barring some Trump-style failure on her part, which I don't think she's going to have, I, I don't think this is going to be an additional problem that costs her votes going forward. Ken, real fast, I have 10 seconds. Do you think this type of litigation has legs? I think it definitely has legs in the in the sort of court of public opinion. Mm -hmm. And Josh is right that this is a problem for Hillary Clinton. She has dealt with it more skillfully. But the issue of the video in particular does get to uh, the idea of a cover up in the administration in the initial days after the attack. Uh, and that's that, that is something that's a legitimate question that Hillary Clinton has answered for, but will continue to have to answer for, especially now with this lawsuit. Ken Vogel, Josh Barrel, General. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.